Um, today's lab we are doing a fractional distillation and just wanted you to take a look at the equipment and glassware that you'll need for this particular lab. Uh, we will be using uh, a 50 milliliter round bottom flask uh, which is where we're going, this is going to serve as our distilling flask. That will be connected to the um, fractionating column. Looks very similar to the condensing column but it is thicker. We're going to talk about the packing material a little bit later. Uh, we will have the steel head, which is connected to the thermometer adapter. Thermometer adapter will be inserted into the, uh, the thermometer will be inserted into the thermometer adapter. We have our condenser and our vacuum adapter. And we will be uh, collecting three different fractions today. So we need three different types of receivers. I'm using a uh, round bottom flask, 25 milliliter round bottom flask. You could use graduated cylinders if you wanted to. Um, maybe an Erlenmeyer flask. Um, any of those would really be okay to use for today. Uh, we need a uh, magnetic stir bar that we will stir the solution in the distilling flask. We need these clips uh, to secure certain joints and then obviously we need some clamps. We need two pieces of tubing for the water going in and coming out of the condenser. Uh, we have a heating mantle and the variac. That's going to be our heating source. We do need a um, stir plate. That one is a combination. We will not use the, the heating mechanism, but we will use the stirring mechanism. And then our packing material are these little ceramic discs that we will use. That, this will go into our fractionating column. Once I have everything set up, I will show you and talk about the purpose of those, uh, the packing material. The two substances we're going to do a fractional distillation on, the mixture will be cyclohexane and toluene. Their boiling points differ about 30 degrees from each other. We probably will use some uh, aluminum foil as an insulation, uh, insulating material to surround the fractionating column. Um, and then ring stands. We'll probably need about two or three ring stands for this particular experiment. Um, I have the fractional distillation apparatus set up. Uh, I have my heating mantle here. Inside that heating mantle is a round bottom flask. It's a, a 50 milliliter one. I've got 10 mils of cyclohexane and 20 mils of toluene. And those two substances differ in boiling points about 30 degrees. Boiling point of uh, cyclohexane is around 81. That of toluene is around 111. If you have two liquids that are both volatile, uh, simple distillation is probably not the best route Simple distillation is mainly used if you have a non-volatile and a volatile substance you're trying to separate like was done in the previous experiment. But if you have a fractionating column, that will allow you to separate these two substances even though their boiling points differ less than 50 degrees, but it does allow you to separate these fairly pure and fairly pure fractions. So if you notice what's different between this apparatus and the one we did for simple distillation is the presence of this what we call the fractionating column. And the fractionating column looks very similar to a, a regular condenser except it's typically uh, larger. And the hollow tube inside can certainly be larger as well. Um, if you are using fractional distillation, you typically need to pack, what we refer to as pack, the fractionating column with some type of packing material. And there's several different types of packing material available. Some people would use uh, just regular steel wool uh, and put that in here. Um, others may use glass beads, that's very commonly used. I'm using these little ceramic discs, if you will, to pack the column. Um, one thing about packing a column, no matter what type of packing material you use, you never want to overpack it. 
because if you overpack it, it's almost like heating a closed system. So not a very good idea. Plus the fact that if it is overpacked, the separation doesn't tend to be as good. The packing material, the purpose of that is when you start heating this mixture of cyclohexane and toluene, it is true that the one that has the lower boiling point, which is the more volatile, will start to move up this packing material first. However, it's not unlikely for toluene also to start moving up the packing material. There will be many more molecules of the more volatile substance, i.e. lower boiling point in this part than it would be the toluene, which has the higher boiling point. But it's not 100%. So what this packing material does, it really provides a, kind of increases the surface area of where these gaseous molecules will climb up, but the, it's warmest, the hottest part of this packing column is at this lower end. As you move up closer to the top, it gets much cooler. So as these gas molecules are, are moving up, they will actually start condensing and may drip back into the distilling flask. Some, when they condense, may condense on this packing material. Then if they get enough heat, they'll evaporate again. Then they condense, then they evaporate. But each time they're condensing and then they start to evaporate or vaporize, they're going up further in this column. So eventually they'll have enough energy to reach the, the steel head, and then once they reach here, they will con, uh, continue down the condenser. When that gaseous material hits that cold condenser, they'll turn back into the liquid, and then we could collect these in our receiving flask over here. Um, I will say this, that we're going to uh, collect three different fractions. The first fraction that we collect, we're going to say, quote, it's mostly pure cyclohexane. And I'm kind of just saying mostly pure because even with this packing material, it may be close to 99% pure cyclohexane, but there's always a chance that some toluene may have kind of hitched a ride, if you will, with the cyclohexane and came over. But it's going to be fairly pure. It will have more cyclohexane than anything else. We should start to collect that first drop around the boiling point of cyclohexane, give or take a few degrees. Um, and the temperature should stay constant at that 81 degrees until most of the cyclohexane has come over. Once the temperature starts to fluctuate more than maybe three degrees, plus or minus three degrees, at that point, we probably want to change our receiving flask. So the first flask, flask A, let's say, if you will, will have mostly cyclohexane in it. The second flask I put here, I'll collect material from about 84 degrees to 100 degrees. And then after 100 degrees, I'll probably change that flask and then collect the third uh, flask or the third material, which will mostly be uh, toluene. So flask A or the first flask will be mostly cyclohexane. The second flask will be mostly a mixture of cyclohexane and toluene, and then when I substitute for the third or change for the third flask, that should be mostly toluene. A couple things that you should always double check. Um, make sure that everything is clamped well, that there's no gaps anywhere. If you notice, I put clamps at the uh, distilling flask and at the receiving flask. I've used these blue clips where there's no uh, flask used. We don't really want to overuse the clamps, as I've mentioned before, because that can put strain or stress on this glassware, which can cause it to break later. So also what I'm going to do is, because this is done in a fume hood, and you've got this constant flow of air circulating, that always cools this fractionating column down. And we really want it to stay warm so that those gas molecules will eventually come up and move over. So after I start heating it, turn it on, I'm going to take some foil paper and just kind of cover. Uh, I'm not going to cover the bottom of this flask, obviously, but I'll put some foil paper here. I'll put some foil paper up on the fractionating column, up through the steel head, and I probably won't go higher than that, or I won't usually go over into the condensing part. But the foil paper, 
it's a good conductor of heat. It's not a great insulator, but uh, it's probably one of the safer things that we have to use um, for that purpose. The other thing is, um, you're going to when we start heating this, the temperature is not going to move hardly at all, and uh, it's kind of a wait and see game. Remember, this thermometer isn't going to change its value, its measurement, until all those vapors get up here. You may have this boiling and there's no change in the temperature. And why? Because those vapors haven't reached the thermometer yet. But when they do, then usually you'll see a quick rise in the, the um, temperature there. So we'll keep a check on that um, and then change flask as necessary. So I'm going to turn the heat on. And I'll probably turn it a little bit higher than I did for the uh, simple distillation. That substance we were trying to distill had a boiling point of around 41 degrees. So I'm going to need a little bit more energy since the lowest boiling substance here is at 81 degrees. I just want to go back and make sure that anytime you are heating any especially organic liquids, you need to either have a boiling stone in there if you, or either a magnetic stir bar. So just want you to see that that is stirring with a magnetic stir bar. The heat is being supplied by the variac. We're not using the hot plate, we're using the heating mantle, and that energy will be coming from the variac. Um, it is, students sometimes don't like that they can't see what's going on, and there is a downside to having to cover this with aluminum foil. You can always go back and open this up a little bit to see if there is anything that looks that you want to make observations of. Um, you can also feel this. When this starts getting pretty warm, then you should think that there's some vapors up there and the condensation part will start pretty soon afterwards. Um, the other thing I just wanted to point out about the fractionating column, and maybe not all columns are uh, designed this way, but the ones that we use, there at the bottom part of this, inside at the bottom of that hollow tube, there are three um, pieces of glassware that project outward um, or inward toward the column that look like a Y. And if you look inside, hold the column this way and look through the, the top of it, if you can't see the Y, then do not use that column for packing because if those uh, little projections have been broken, the glass has been broken, then if you pack something, it's just gonna go right through. So another thing just to kind of look out for when you're using uh, fractionating columns. I just wanna remind you of a couple other things for the fractional distillation or any type of distillation or refluxing. Uh, it's a good idea not to go more than probably two thirds of the height of the round bottom flask that you're using. If you go much higher than that, sometimes it's easy for this mixture to bump up into the fractionating column or reflux condenser, whichever you're using. So you can see that it's boiling, it's stirring pretty hot, but this is still fairly cool, so it's going to take a while, again, for all those vapors to go up to reach the thermometer so they can condense through the side arm there. Uh, but watch out for that. If you do notice that it starts bubbling up and jumping up in there, then you just want to cut down on the heat that you're supplying. Uh, Temperature is around 78 degrees, and we have a little bit coming over in the receiving flask, and we're going to keep collecting it until the temperature changes about plus or minus three degrees. Once that happens, we'll switch uh, receiving flask. I'm going to measure how much uh, we have in here. Uh, this first receiving flask theoretically should contain mostly cyclohexane. So we'll measure volume wise how much we get back. Then we'll uh, look at the second fraction. We'll uh, continue collecting it until the temperature gets to about 100. Then we'll measure how much of that we received and then we'll switch flask again and do a third fraction. And the third fraction should be mostly uh, toluene. This is the uh, results of the first fraction we collected that should be mostly cyclohexane and we collected 6.4 mils. Um, I changed the receiving flask when the temperature went up to about 85. Uh, at that point then there's more likely going to start coming some uh, toluene. 
So I replaced the first flask with the second round bottom flask. We're now collecting flask number two or contents of flask number two. And I'm gonna let this collect until the temperature gets to about 100. We're at a little over 90 now. So when that gets to 100, I'm gonna switch that flask out, measure how much was in that particular flask, and then we'll um, keep doing the distillation until we collect flask three. Just switched flask two with flask three. Temperature went up to a little over 100, so I wanted to switch out the flask. So hopefully in flask number three is gonna be mostly toluene. This is flask number two. I'm gonna measure the contents volume-wise of this mixture. The other thing I just wanna point out to you too, before you pour any of this out, make sure you take a paper towel and wipe out that grease on the inside before you do anything with it. Uh, just measured the volume of flask uh, number two, uh, fraction number two, and also 6.6 .6 mils of uh, uh, the mixture, which most likely will be a mixture of cyclohexane and toluene, but 6.6 .6 mils of that mixture collected. And this was collected between 84 degrees uh, up to 100 degrees. and cut it off. There's just a little bit left in the uh, distilling flask. Again, we never want to distill to dryness. So I went ahead and cut the heat source off. I need to let that just cool a little bit before I remove this and see if I can catch those last few drops. After um, I measure this, we'll report that data. And then the last thing that you need to do, of course, after every experiment, is disconnect the apparatus when it's cool enough and then make sure you wipe off, I can't stress that enough, all these ground glass joints you need to wipe out on the outside as well as the inside before you start cleaning those. Always rinse with water, always do a final rinse with acetone, and then you can put that piece, those uh, pieces of glassware back in your lab kits. Uh, just measured the, the uh, amount of material in flask number three, and we had 12.2 milliliters of flask three a fraction three, which should be mostly of the toluene. Uh, just measured what was left in the steel pot and it was 1.8 milliliters. And just wanted to kind of draw this to your attention. These um, ceramic discs, the plate uh, packing material, we can reuse this. So when you're done cleaning, you want to again wipe out the top and the bottom, uh, wipe off that grease. And then you can pour these into a beaker and just rinse them with water and then some acetone uh, and then we'll lay them on a piece of paper towel to dry and they'll be good for another experiment.